Hi class, welcome to Advantage. I'm Dr. Scott Adamson, and this is the second in a series of two videos about the derivative of e to the x. Now, if you've already watched the first one, your life has been changed because you now know exactly why the derivative of e to the x is just e to the x. By the way, this function e to the x is the only at least non-trivial case where a function is the derivative of itself. So that's kind of a unique thing and something you should uh, keep in your memory of why it's important. But now we're going to look at why does the derivative of e to the x become e to the x? Why does that make sense just from a different point of view? So here we are, uh, y equals e to the x. What we could do as a proof is we could take the natural log of both sides of this equation and say the natural log of y is equal to the natural log of e to the x. Now keep in mind, the goal of this is to find the derivative of y, to find the derivative of this function e to the x. So keep that in mind as we go forward. But first, we're going to apply some algebraic rules. Do you remember the rule of logarithms that says the natural log of e to the x is equivalent to x times the natural log of e? That's a nice little move because... The natural log of e, the power on e that gives e, the exponent on e that gives e, is just 1. So we can further simplify and say the natural log of y is equal to x. Now, you can also just make that jump because x is the exponent on e that produces y. x is the exponent on e that produces y. We're really just applying the properties of logarithms and exponential functions and rewriting this equation. But now... Let's take the derivative implicitly and see what happens. The derivative of the natural log of y is 1 over y times dy dx. That's a little bit of chain rule, a little bit of implicit differentiation. The derivative of x is just 1. Now keep in mind, our goal again is to figure out what the derivative of y with respect to x is. That is, given y is a function of x, we want to find dy dx. So it just takes one more move. If we just multiply both sides by y, we find out that dy dx is equal to y. Now you might be thinking, well, that's crazy. Why, why would the derivative of e to the x just be y? Well, let's do one more move. The derivative of y with respect to x is equal to y, but y is equal to e to the x. So we can now claim that dy dx is equal to e to the x. As we showed in the previous video, the derivative of e to the x is indeed just e to the x.